Welcome to Legislative Watch. I'm your host, Elizabeth Allen Hodge, and today my guests are Representative Pete Nielsen, who is fourth term representative from District 22, which is Elmore and Owyhee Counties, is that correct? Elmore and Boise County. Oh, Boise County. Okay, thank you. You've got a big district. Yes. And my other guest is Chris Penico. Um, Chris is actually also uh, from Elmore County. He is the vice chair for the Elmore County GOP. He is also the legislative chair for District 22. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, it is. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, I want to start with Representative Nielsen. The whole point of our being here is um, some time ago, it's my understanding that Chris was at the legislature and he was uh, involved over on the Senate side with some concerns that he had and um, he was told by a security guard that he made some legislators uncomfortable and he was no longer welcome. Now, you've known Chris for a while. Would you please tell our listeners what, how long you've known him and uh, what the circumstances are under which you know him? I've known Chris uh, over three years, and the first time I met and talked to Chris, he was a student at BSU, and he came come to me with concerns about some of the regulations at BSU that were in conflict with uh, uh, religious uh, opportunities and etc. And he chatted with me about those things, and, uh, and that's where I first got to know Chris. At all those times, Chris was... Uh, should we say, uh, trying to explain his case to me, he was persistent, which it, that's good to be. He was never, uh, never on any occasion was he uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't out of line or no, um, disruptive. No, never, never disturbing the peace or anything like that. In fact, is uh, quite respectful, but. Uh, uh, He's the type of fellow that uh, uh, tries to stick to what he's trying to get done and doesn't give up easily. And frankly, that's okay. All right, then, um, Pete, then, so your experience with him is that he, or your initial experience with him, was that he had some concerns relative to how some religious groups were being treated at BSU, and that's how you came to know him, and then you started working with him through um, your political party affiliation. Is that that's correct? That's true. Yes. Uh, later on, Chris became affiliated with the Elmore County GOP Central Committee. He became our youth committee person, and he is presently, as he stated, the Vice Chair of the Elmore County GOP and the Chair of the District 22. All right, let me let me do a brief uh, recap o about what this whole situation is for our listeners. Um, Chris is uh, has been accused of trespassing on public property, and this started with his attending um, some hearings, I guess, or discussions over at the state legislature and where you aired some concerns. You were then approached by an officer who said that you were no longer welcome there because you made some people uncomfortable, I believe was the term that was used. Um, you uh, subsequently wrote a letter of complaint and took it to the governor's office, and uh, you were on your way to the attorney general's office when the same officer stopped you on the street, handcuffed you, and said that you had trespassed on public property. Is, is that correct? That's correct. All right. I guess, Pete, one of the questions is, as a lawmaker, um, what's your understanding of trespassing on public property? Well, frankly, uh, unless there's a, a definite security risk of some time, I've never heard of uh, uh, anything involved that way. Uh, uh, for instance, at the local county courthouses, they have security guards there, and you have to pass security to get on in. At the Capitol or at the Capitol Annex, we've never had anything like that. People can come and go. Yes, there are security people there that kind of watch and keep things 
you know, uh, in order Secure. and under control and things like that. But uh, uh, the security in the Capitol building is so that people can come and see us and have free access and talk to us as they need to because they are constituents and sometimes they need to come and see us on a one-to-one -one basis and we expect that. And so I was quite surprised when Chris was, uh, I was told that Chris was, and I was told this by Chris that he wasn't allowed to come in onto the premises anymore and I have not been able to find out who, where, or what, or why th those uh, orders or whatever it was that came about to uh, cause this to happen. Well, now, and, and also we should tell um, our listeners that Chris has never been accused of disturbing the peace. Um, he was not, uh, none of the charges say that he was disruptive or caused any kind of a problem. And to your knowledge, he's never created a scene. That's true as far as my understanding goes. Uh, I, I'm under the understanding that, and I think it was stated earlier on this, while we was right here, he made a few people uncomfortable. Now, I'm not sure what the word uncomfortable mm -hmm. in that particular sense means. Maybe they were uncomfortable that he was asking questions they didn't want to answer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but whatever never a threat it was. to anyone. There, there was never any... Anything said that he was a danger to anyone or that he had been disruptive or uh, caused any kind of... There's no charge of disturbance of the peace. Well, and that's true, but in my own case, uh, Chris has never been a threat okay. of any kind. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess where we go from here is the fact that um, Chris and I met earlier with his attorney, spent most of the morning with it, and there were several questions that we raised. Um, number one, uh, apparently during his uh, hearing and subsequent trial, which he did not have a trial by jury, he uh, uh, elected to have a trial uh, with just the judge, and um, we can go into those reasons later, but some of the questions that were raised was, was his accuser ever identified, and how can you trespass on public property? And the uh, attorney tells us the only way that you would be guilty of, of pub public property is like if you had uh, government-owned housing, you know, in that case, uh, an owner or an occupant may say, you know, get a restraining order against somebody or keep them from uh, trespassing. But the other thing is there's never been a, a restraining order issued against uh, Chris. So um, how can you trespass on public property? That's a really good question. As far as a restraining order, there was never one written. If there was one verbally said somewhere by somebody somehow, I'm not aware of that either. In my inquiries to find out why uh, there was such an order or where it may have come from, I have been not been able to find that out. Thank you, Pete. When we get back from the break, we're going to pursue this a little bit further, uh, asking uh, some questions relative to under what part of the code the, uh, a policeman would be allowed to issue a mandate to uh, preclude him from entering a public building and under whose authority. I'm Elizabeth Allen Hodge. The program is Legislative Watch.